legislative action. We need a constitutional president who will use the executive order in a proper manner to repeal all the executive orders that were misplaced. And there was an executive order written back in 1973. Not too many people have talked about this and they might not think it's too important. I happen to think it's very important. Unfortunately, or characteristically, maybe, it was, it was executed by a Republican president in 1973. And they established the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency. Well, that is a totally unconstitutional vehicle for enforcing law. And just last week, I imagine many of you saw, there was a, uh, a, there, there was a drug bust. They don't know what they were doing. They, if they were suspected of using something a lot safer than alcohol. Yeah. There was a SWAT team that went in and grabbed seven young people on the campus of uh, UC at, at uh, 
um, San Diego. Yeah. And they threw them all in jail, and then after they sorted out the paperwork, they released six, and they just forgot about one person. So why should a lady, when people acting outside the law, outside the Constitution, those individuals who committed those acts that were illegal, why shouldn't they be personally liable? got even more abusive, I introduced legislation along those lines. Uh, of course, the best way to have treated taken care of the TSA was to vote against the establishment of the TSA to begin with, and to have voted against the Patriot Act, which they were so much authority. But my suggestion in this legislation was that the TSA agent can do nothing that you can't do. Right. So if you can't grope a stranger and you go to prison, if anybody at the airport gropes a stranger and he pretends he's allowed to because he belongs to the government, he should be personally liable and suffer yeah. the consequences. It is a shame that our government here in Texas didn't stand up stronger against uh, the TSA. But uh, let me tell you, there is another vehicle, and it's going to be used ultimately, and they're starting to use it, and that is nullification. Nullification has not been used throughout our history, but it was it was understood and was assumed to be a proper procedure where the states just ignore the feds when they come in and, and try to enforce illegal laws. But there are two states now, I, I believe it's Virginia and Arizona, they have passed in a way a nullification law about not supporting the military when they come in under the National Defense Authorization Act and arrest the American citizen that they will not participate in those arrests. policemen are carrying guns now. Before the TSA, I had a number, it was close to 100,000, so it must be much bigger now. As far as I'm concerned, under the way the Constitution was written, there was not to be any national police force, there was to be a defense force defending against enemies, but not to have a national police force coming in. But 100,000 plus now who come in to enforce regulations that are technically illegal, that all should be canceled out. We say no more of this. We want to take care of our own business and get the feds out of our lives and out of our crisis, a lot worse in other places than, than Texas. And uh, one time a few months ago, somebody asked me in the media, they said, who are you running against? <laughs> and who, what if one individual are you running against? I think they wanted me to say, you know, that 100% of our problems came from Obama, and I didn't yield to their temptation to say that, even though he's responsible for an awful lot of mess we have. <laughs> no, I said, the one individual that I'm running against is Kate. <laughs> But guess what? I'm getting to debate Keynes through his, his apostle, Paul Krugman. And, and that is an important subject. Uh, a true revolution has to be ideological. Uh, revolutions can be violent and they can overthrow a government and nothing can really improve. An ideologically positive revolution is what is necessary. And that's what we have going in this country. Revolution, and uh, there was a clear understanding about what freedom was all about, what sound money was all about, and that's why they wrote a, a good document, the best probably in the world, although it was obviously flawed because we ended up not living up to that document. But at least there was an intellectual movement before that, as there has been now for several decades. But what I have noticed since I've been involved in this since the 1970s, what I have noticed in the last five years. All of a sudden, the revolution has gone 
Main Street. Yeah. You are waking up. Yeah. And they're understanding, you know, that the Keynesian argument, the big government argument, is we get into trouble, which they recognize that, you know, we spend too much, we borrow too much, we regulate too much, we uh, print too much, and then we get into a predictable crisis, and what do they say? Well, we haven't spent enough, we haven't borrowed enough, we haven't printed enough money. Then they wonder, then they wonder why the solution hasn't come. I believe, and I'm convinced by free market economics, that wealth comes from work and savings. you don't want the government to spend our resources, whether it's direct taxation or indirect through the dilution value of your money. So my suggestion in our first year will be to cut the budget in real terms by $1 trillion.